Good evening guys and welcome to a new video. Now I know this isn't what we, well normally or at least lately have been doing on the channel, but I did want to try out something a little bit different from the normal routine and I figured this could be an interesting place to start since a lot of you seem to already be enjoying my voice. Of course, if this isn't your cup of tea, you can feel free to skip the video and come back as of course the next one will be a typical Subnautica lore one. So you will definitely get your fill of that. Now just as stated in the title, in this video we will be reading a Subnautica creepypasta. This one was not written by me but was in fact entirely made by Eric1001 and posted onto the Unknown Worlds forums back in 2015. Now even after looking I wasn't able to dig up any more information on him so I can't give any more credit other than the link to the creepypasta and his profile in the description. But Eric if you happen to be watching this I would very gladly give you a shout out if you just message me either on Twitter or in Discord we can definitely make something happen. Now without any further ado, snuggle up in your blankets, get a cup of hot coffee and let's go. In the unfathomable depths of Subnautica, there lurks a monster. I am writing this to spare you from the time and pain of finding it. Now for those of you who don't know, Subnautica is a game about exploring the depths of a beautiful underwater alien planet that contains many species of sometimes aggressive fauna. Anyways, as I was swimming, I encountered this huge island and I thought that was cool because I had not seen it before. I decided to go explore but after looking around for a while, I got bored and decided to try something else. I wanted to try to go as far down as I possibly could into the crushing depths to see if they had an end. Now it is also important to note here that the ocean floor after going in any one direction for a while drops suddenly into the depths. How far it goes? Well, no one knows exactly. First, I left the island and swam south away from it for about 10 minutes. When I decided to turn back and look at the ship, it was nowhere to be seen. I had swum so far that all I could see was endless water and the last light of sun as the night set in. I then began my dive. Luckily, I had tons of batteries for my sea glide and then there's always the cheats if I needed more. As I descended into the depths, it became darker and darker the further I went down, which is normal but unraveling nevertheless. At around 43,000 meters, I stopped. Shocked at how far I had gone, I felt strangely alone in this unending darkness. After a few minutes, I continued my descent with resolve and losing all track of time. Down and down I went for how long I'm not sure. After about 800,000 meters, I noticed something strange. My depth gauge stopped working and it stayed on 800,052 on the dot. I had not seen that glitch before but it did not surprise me as I doubt many people have gone that far anyways. After using some console commands to refill my batteries, I continued down into the abyss. About 5 minutes later, something odd happened. All of the music abruptly stopped. And after 10 seconds, a haunting mournful melody started playing that I had never heard. I tried swimming horizontally for a while to see if I could find something, but found nothing. Interestingly enough, it does seem like the haunted melody only plays in a certain area and will stop if you swim too far away. After returning back to where I left my beacon, I continued to dive deeper. About 7 minutes later, something unnerving happened. The haunting melody stopped and all background sounds ceased to play as well. I continued further down, however the lack of music and all background sounds made me feel the creeps as I continued my trek in the total silence. After about 10 minutes of diving, I noticed that bubbles had suddenly stopped and all I could see at this point was utter darkness. As I went down even further, I spun around wildly and lost all track of direction since there were no bubbles and my depth gauge was not working. After a while, I continued in a direction that I thought would be down 
And about 15 minutes later, I was almost ready to give up and quit. But that's when I heard it. The sound I heard was so unnerving. I can only describe it as a low, deep, growly, wheezing moan. I was shocked that the developers would even bother putting a sea creature down this far, but I knew I had to investigate and swam towards the source of the noise. As I got closer, the noise got louder and I started to imagine the most horrible sea monsters imaginable. Little did I know that what I would see would be much worse. After a little bit, I noticed strange green balls of light glowing in the distance, moving very strangely, as if they had been invisibly connected. When I got closer to one of them, I watched it mesmerized. It was only after a few minutes that I realized my flashlight was actually turned off. I pulled it up and clicked the button to turn it on. And that's when I saw it. What I beheld in front of me was the most freakish abomination hideous beyond description. A huge mass of riddling tentacles squirmed around with millions of mouths all over them. A ginormous bloodshot pulsating eye stared right at me. The creature's own bones jutting out from its mass of tentacles. I stared in horror at the abomination in front of me. What I thought were glowing balls of green light were in fact glowing sacks on the end of its tentacles that were not bright enough to illuminate the rest of its body without a flashlight. The creature was giant, far bigger than anything in Subnautica, with even some of the largest creatures being tiny compared to it. I swam forward. As I got closer, the thing gave a wheezing mournful groan as its tentacles reached out for me, its giant eye pulsating faster, its exposed bones creaking from the movement. As the tentacles got closer, something weird happened. The game started to jerk and lag. It was running at around 2 frames per second. Then as the mouth covered tentacles got mere inches away, the game froze. I was left staring at the frozen image of the thing in all its glory. Its giant eye seemingly still looking at me. I immediately hit Control alt delete and went to the task manager where I hit end process on Subnautica and forcefully quit the game. Looking back at it now, I can only guess as to why that thing is in the game at all. Perhaps the developers were testing a new creature and did not think anyone would find it. Or perhaps it was a rejected thing they were going to add but then changed their minds and left it down there when they thought no one would ever see it. It might even be an easter egg. Perhaps that is one of the reasons why the game froze in the first place, because the animations of it were never polished and it simply threw an error when it was about to attack. Why it is in the game is a mystery, but it is one of the scariest things I have ever seen. I have tried looking for it several times since, but haven't had any luck. If you wish to go look for it yourself, well best of luck to you, but just do remember that once you see it, you'll probably not forget it. And that was The Thing in the Abyss by Eric1001 and I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I very much hope you enjoyed listening to it. If you did, maybe consider leaving a like, commenting or subscribing and I strongly encourage you to click on the link in the description and go read the creepypasta yourself. With that, I want to wish you a beautiful rest of the day and I'll see you in whatever next video I make. Bye bye.